Hi friends, welcome back to another Bible time. Man, I missed you last week, but I am so glad to be back with you today. Today we are starting our Advent series, and this is just a few weeks long, um, so don't expect this to last eight weeks like the question series did. This is a lot shorter because it only takes us up until Christmas. Now, Advent, most of you have probably heard that word before. Advent means coming. And we use this word to, dis to uh, describe the season of the church that we're in, the worship season that we're in, the beginning of the church calendar. And Advent, or coming, is when we prepare our hearts and our minds and even our church buildings and our homes to celebrate the coming of who? Yeah, you guys are too smart for me. Yeah, the coming of Jesus to celebrate Jesus's birth on Christmas Day. And then Christmas Day kicks off a 12-day season called Christmas. Don't let anyone tell you that Christmas is a day, not a season. It is a season in the church calendar, and it's 12 days long. But right now, we're still in Advent. And so during our Advent series, each week, I'm going to light a candle, and we're going to talk about the different candles of Advent and what they mean. Now, I don't have a full Advent set like we have at church with the three purple candles, the one pink candle, and the one white candle in the middle. I just have this lowly candle. So I'll be using the same candle every week, but we will talk about what the different candles mean. So to start our time today, I'm going to light this Advent candle. As we remember that Christ has come and he will come again. You see, Advent isn't only a season when we remember that Christ came and where we prepare to celebrate Christmas. During Advent, we remember that we're kind of in this in-between time as followers of Jesus, that Jesus came once, he died, he rose again, and he went back to heaven. But he promised before he left that someday he will come back. And when he does come back, he will make everything right. And so today, friends, in this first week of Advent, we light the candle of hope. And to remember what our hope is, I'm going to read very briefly from the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah 2, verses 2 through 4. There is a day coming when the mountain of God's house will be the mountain, solid, towering over all mountains. All nations will river toward it. People from all over set out for it. They'll say, come, let's climb God's mountain. Go to the house of the God of Jacob. He'll show us the way he works so we can live the way we're made. Zion's the source of the revelation. God's message comes from Jerusalem. He'll settle things fairly between the nations. He'll make things right between many peoples. They'll turn their swords into shovels, their spears into into garden hose. No more will nation fight nation. They won't play war anymore. Wow, did you guys hear that? Were you listening? What is this huge hope that we have? What is God promising through the prophet Isaiah? Say it louder. I can't hear you. <laughs> yeah, God is promising that there will be a new kingdom. And in this kingdom, there will be no war and things will be made right. We have a hope through Jesus that things will be okay. And man, that for me is something really important to remember, especially this year. This year has been hard, harder than most. I think it's been that way for you too. And so this hope that God is going to make everything right that even the prophets of the Old Testament proclaim this huge hope, it's comforting to me. And I hope it's comforting to you too. And so friends, this is a short one, um, but I hope that, ooh, hope, 
I hope that um, by lighting this candle of hope and by talking about Advent, you've maybe gained a little bit more hope today. And so I'm going to close our time with an Advent prayer. Faithful God, out of wars and chaos, you bring the order of peace. Renew us in hope that we may work toward Christ's advent of peace among all nations. God of promise, God of hope, into our darkness, come. Amen. I'll see you soon, friends.